year. <laughs> this is the first video of 2020. And thinking back on it now, I can't believe I haven't made a video like this before. I mean, outside of the basics, shortcuts and quick tips are probably the most requested topic in a lot of my classes. And I probably hear, is there a shortcut for that? Just as much. So today I'm gonna to give you 10 tips and shortcuts that I have found useful over the years. No particular order, and I'm sure I can think of more than 10, but 10 just sounded like a good number for a video. So, you ready? Let's get started. Tip number one, the space bar. This keyboard shortcut does a lot. First off, when you're on any tool other than the type tool, pressing the space bar automatically defaults to the hand tool. This is awesome when you're sketching because it's a quick way to move your page around on the fly without having to actually switch to the hand tool or the navigator panel. It also allows you to reposition an element while you're drawing or using the tool. So for instance, you can reposition a targeted zoom, reposition a point you made with the pen tool, or a shape you've drawn. Remember that you must still have the tool activated, so don't let go of your mouse button, just add the space bar into the mix. Tip number two, the zoom tool. Zooming is pretty important, and so I have a few tricks for this. The first shortcut I learned a long time ago, and I still use it to this day, and that is to press and hold the space bar and command key, and tap the mouse button or trackpad to zoom in. Add the Alt or Option key to this to zoom out. As I started to work more on my laptop, I realized that doing a pinch motion on the trackpad, like you would on your smart devices, will also allow you to zoom in and out. And by the way, moving two fingers across the trackpad will move the page around as if you were using the hand tool. Tip number three, default settings. Should you ever need to get back to the default setting of a black stroke, white fill, one point stroke weight, just press the letter D. I will also sometimes use this if I need a one point black stroke and no fill. For me, it's simpler to just take off the fill than to reset the stroke weight and stroke color and fill color. Tip number four, duplicating a series of objects. This is a good one. And although I have a few other methods now to do something like this, I still use this one for a variety of things. Say you're showing several of the same item, like you're showing colorways of a CAD. Usually, you'll color one, and then copy, paste, and recolor the copied sketch in your next colorway. If you're showing them all on one board, you'll probably want them placed the same spacing apart. And yes, there isn't a line palette that can distribute the spacing for you, but a quicker option is to drag a copy of the item, then press Command-D or Control-D on a PC as many times as you need to duplicate the item. This shortcut duplicates the items the exact same spacing you copied the first item. Now keep in mind that this shortcut is duplicating your last action, not just duplicating the object. So it's important that you drag the copy of the item to the exact spacing you want it to be, then immediately after, use Command D. Tip number five, hiding and showing the edges of your object. Now this one is actually quite helpful when you need it, but it's also helpful to note because I've had a lot of students lose the selection color on their object and they're like, what just happened? Command H will hide your edges. And what does that mean? It means the highlight color will temporarily disappear. This has been super helpful for me when I'm editing objects with a lot of points, like a scan lace that I image traced. Sometimes the points are so dense that the selection color just gets in the way. When you hide it temporarily, you're able to see your changes a lot better. Now, if all of a sudden you're selecting an object and it's not highlighting, and you've checked to make sure it's not locked, try pressing Command H. It's very possible that you accidentally hid the edges. Tip number six, precise cursors. In the same vein as tip number five, I've sometimes needed to do very detailed drawing work and the pen tool icon was just too big and it got in the way. That's when you wanna turn on precise cursors and all that is, is pressing the caps lock. It turns your pen tool into a crosshair instead of a regular calligraphy pen tip icon that you normally see. 
Now, I don't use this one as often as the others, but what I do get very often are questions about why the pen tool looks like that. So even if you don't actually need to use this, you'll know how to troubleshoot if you ever see it. Tip number seven, show or hide panels. This is another one that's helpful when you need it, but can make you a little frantic if you didn't mean to do it. Occasionally, I want a little more space on my screen to see what I'm doing. This can be really helpful, particularly if you work on a smaller laptop, say a 15 inch or less. Pressing the tab key will temporarily hide all of your panels so that the only thing visible on your screen is your sketch. You can still draw and use any tools, but the panels are out of the way and you can see your project unobstructed. If you need to keep your tools panel visible, press shift tab. Tip number eight, the tilde key. Now I did a whole video about the tilde key and I'll leave a description below so you can see all the cool things it can do. But one of my favorite things it does is move patterns around in a sketch. How many times have you had to use a pattern that wasn't in repeat and you just had to make it work as a fill in your sketch? And at some point, as you're filling the sketch, the seam where the repeat starts and stops shows up on your sketch. Well, you can just move the pattern until you can no longer see it on the sketch. And to do that, you'll press and hold the tilde key while using the selection tool. Click on the print in the sketch and drag until the seam disappears. The other reason I like to use this is to move the print around in the sketch so it looks random, as it would if you actually cut the garment, and not aligned as it normally shows up when you initially fill it in Illustrator. Tip number nine, change unit settings on the fly. This came in really handy one year when I did a bunch of artwork and measured everything in inches, only to have the factory come back and tell me everything needed to be in millimeters. Oof. Anyway, I've noticed that many people don't change their rulers to inches when they start a new document. And so when they do need to bring up their rulers to do an actual size sketch, let's say for a pocket detail, they show their rulers and the rulers look foreign to them. Normally, you need to open your preferences to change the units on your rulers, but a quicker way to do it is to right mouse click over the vertical or horizontal rulers. And when you do that, a menu of all the different methods of ruler measurements Illustrator has to offer will appear. Choose inches or whichever one you need. And when you let go of your mouse, the rulers will update to that form of measurement. Last but not least is tip number 10, offset path. I'll be honest, I've been sketching for so long that I can usually eyeball my stitching. But I'll also admit that this is not the most accurate method. This is when offset path comes in handy. Offsetting a path creates an evenly spaced object around your sketch or path. So for instance, if you wanna create a row of stitching along a curved hem, I'll copy the line first, and instead of doing a regular paste, command or control V, I'll do paste in front, command or control F, which will paste the line right on top of where I copied it from. Take off the fill if there is one, and then go to Object, Path, Offset Path. Choose how far away you want your stitch line to be. For this, I want it to be pretty close, so it only looks like maybe a quarter inch stitched hem. So I'm going to choose 0.05 inches for the offset. Check the preview box so you can look at it before you press OK. And once you do press OK, you'll be left with a shape around your original line. Delete any portion of the shape that you don't need for the stitching and change the solid line to a stitch line. The last thing I'll do is get rid of the original line I used to offset. So I hope you enjoyed those tips. I know they were kind of random, but I do really use them regularly. And here's another bonus tip for you. You can create your own shortcuts. A lot of people don't know that you can do that, but you can. And you can create shortcuts for panels, tools, functions, just about anything in Illustrator. And if you wanna see exactly how to do that, you can check out this video on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.